this film has been in the can for two years. Has it aged like fine wine or gone sour like old milk? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Cabin in the Woods. Somebody sent those things here to get us. You're missing the point. They want to see us punished. Whatever, another horror movie. Ooh, stupid teenagers in the woods. I want, ooh, a force field? Hmm, perhaps like the very cabin in the woods of the title, there's more to this movie than meets the eye. And there's got to be something interesting here to convince the likes of Bradley Whitford and Academy Award nominee Richard Jenkins to get involved. And while you might think that something is the hopes that producer-writer Joss Whedon might cast them in Avengers 2, think again. Remember, Cabin in the Woods was made back in 2009. Whedon didn't even land the Avengers gig until a year later, which makes it all the more impressive or ridiculous that Marvel and Disney would hire someone to head up such a crucial film who couldn't even get his current films released. But to be fair, first Cabin in the Woods was delayed so it could be converted to 3D, and then while they were waiting to do that, MGM folded. When the new MGM management came in, they probably had a fire sale, and Lionsgate picked up Cabin in the Woods. Lionsgate was then going to release the film for Halloween last year, but then had the bright idea to make this pre-Avengers Whedon and pre-Thor Hemsworth team up an appetizer to Marvel's big summer movie. But despite some interesting twists, how good can Cabin in the Woods really be if the new MGM couldn't wait to get rid of it, and Lionsgate also decided it wasn't worth sinking in the extra money for a 3D post-conversion? Then again, Joss Whedon has a cult following for a reason, and early reviews for the film have been positive. Man, I feel like I'm trapped in some elaborate maze. Is this movie good or bad? Let's go find out from some people who've already braved the cabin in the woods. So this movie is supposed to be very clever. Was it clever? Yeah, it was <laughs> clever. I thought it was excellent. It was. It had, it had a great twist in it that, you know, I don't want to give up too much. So we're at the other theater, but you happened to see two movies today, and the first was <laughs> Cabin in the Woods, right? Mm -hmm. How Absolutely. was that? Phenomenal. Certainly went in a way I wasn't quite expecting. Did you like the way it went? <laughs> um, uh -oh. At first I did. Near the end, I don't want to give anything away, but um, I'm not quite sure about a couple of things I did. We know there's on. like a force field and some crazy room, yeah. right? Oh, yes. Yeah. So does it go like really beyond that? It goes way beyond. When I saw the previews for it, I was like, I was like, seemed kind of odd because it seemed very sci-fi but horror, and I, and I couldn't grasp which was going to be, you know, which was going to be the bigger part of the movie, um, but very well balanced. So it ended up being both, right? right? Horror and sci-fi. Mm -hmm. If you have a low tolerance for gore, this is one you have to stay away from. Oh, really? It's got pretty gory. Well, what's the better meta horror film, Scream or Cabin in the Woods? Kevin in the woods, I gotta say now. Really? <laughs> you are a weed knight. Well, Scream will always have a, a place in our hearts. You know, that, that, that basically just, it basically turned the whole horror genre on its head and said, you know, let, let's make fun of it. Let's make fun of ourselves. It was a pioneer. Yes, but this one is, is, is a close second. This one, um, I mean, they sort of know that there's something going on, but they, um, you know, they're less wise-ass about it, but also mm. it gets into more what I can't give away. Oh, okay, so you have to see it. If you're a Josh Whedon fan, uh, this is Josh Whedon unhinged. Are you a Josh Whedon fan? Yes. Um, you know, I watched uh, Buffy and uh, Angel and Firefly and Dollhouse, so yeah, that's okay. the main reason why it came to this movie. Not really, it, but the thing is I, I bought into I bought into Scream and I bought into this world. So you came to this for the horror aspect, not because you're a Whedon fan? No. Right? Exactly. What, what did you think of the work? Do you, I mean, Joss Whedon's uh, famous for being very clever and stuff like that. Oh, well, this is very clever. Yeah? This, I'll, give him, I'll give him credit for that. Got the best and worst of his impulses and uh, all of them. Oh, like what? Tell me, what's, what's the best Well, the best thing about it, of course, well, one of the best things about it is the dialogue. What if you're not a Joss Whedon fan? Will you enjoy this film? Oh, yeah, definitely. Anybody is going to, yeah, anybody's going to get a kick out of this movie. What were some of the downsides that well, are typical for Whedon? Um, I think that sometimes he doesn't know when to Wish. It's not perfect, but it, it, I, if you buy into the whole premise, 
And plus, I had a redhead, so I'm always a sucker for a redhead. So. <laughs> That's great. What would right. you give Cabin in the Woods on a 1 to 10? <laughs> 10,000. Probably about a seven and a half. Um, I would give it nine. So if audiences feel your movie is in the same league as Scream, you know you must be doing something right, with Cabin in the Woods overall getting an 8.5. I'm Grace Randolph reporting from AMC Empire 25, and I hope you'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.